Okay, today we are doing simulation analysis. And I want us to do a question December 2017. December 2017, question number 3, 3D. December 2017, 3D. So simulation is a topic in QA or quantitative analysis. It's in many other, it is in many other courses. So let's read that question, December 2017, question number 3D says, the management of new era computer system limited is planning to launch a new product, branded Zimsung. The fixed cost of Zimsung is 80,000 shillings. However, the selling price, variable cost and annual sales volume of Zimsung are uncertain. The data below relate to product Zimsung. So we have the unit selling price, which can either be 60, 80, 100. Probabilities are given for each price there. 0 0.25, 0 0.45, 0 0.30. Then we have variable cost, shillings. It can either be 20, 40, 60. Probability of each is 0 0.25, 0 0.55, 0 0.20. Sales volume, we have in units. 40,000 units, 60,000 units, and 100,000 units. And the probability of each is 0 0.3, 0 0.35, and 0 0.35, respectively, for each of those sales volumes. Then we required simulate the average profit of product Zimsung on the basis of 10 trials. Then you're told to use the following random numbers. So some, to simulate is to initiate a reality, and you need to understand that bit. Simulation is like a trial and error method. That's why the question is saying, using 10 trials, we need to simulate the profit of this company. And you need to understand the formula on how to get profit so that you can do the simulation. So the first step in simulation analysis is identifying the variables. If you read this question, you'll see the variables. The first one is the unit selling price because the event of the variables is either 60, 80, 100, and you're given the probabilities of each of them. So that is the first variable, unit selling price. Another variable is the variable cost because it can be 20 shillings, 40 or shillings, 60. And each of the uh, events of the variable cost we have the probability being attached there or given there. And then the third variable is a sales volume, where we are given 40,000 units, 60,000 units, and 100,000 units as the events of the sales volume. Then you can see the probabilities attached to each of the events. So the first step is identifying. The, to identify is just to look at the, the question given, then check where you have probabilities. So that variable which is there, it is uh, what is a variable. If you see the event of the variable being given probabilities or chances of occurring or taking place, the variable costs the same and sales volume. Now, for each of these variables where you start, you need to, to just have this, the unit selling price. So you start by say, having the unit price. So the unit selling price is a shillings. You write them 60, 80, 100. So we have 60, uh, we have 80, we have 100. Then we will attach probabilities to the events. Attach probabilities to the events. That is the next step after identifying the variables. Step number two is attaching probabilities to the events of the variable and the probability for these ones we are given there. 0 0.25 and we have 0 0.45 and 0 0.30 after you attach these probabilities if you add these probabilities you realize it is adding to a to one so from there step number three uh it's you come up with the cumulative probabilities you build the cumulative probabilities so we start the first one, probability become it's where we are, that's our starting point for the cumulative. Cumulative means we shall be adding them. So the first probability is 0 0.25. Add because add 0 0.45, then you'll get 0 0.70. 0. 
and do not write 0 0.7 because 0 0.7 in, pro, uh, in simulation and 0 0.70 it matters a lot there is a big difference because we use two decimals so remain with the two decimals so 0 0.70 you add 0 0.30 you will get one and not one alone it is 1.00 it's uh, this zero zero they mean a lot in simulation after you get that you need to determine what we call the random number ranges so I'll have the random number ranges. So a range, these are, these are continuous numbers running from the certain limit to another upper limit. Now, this, if this is the first uh, uh, event, and these are the probabilities, the first range will come from 0, 0, and not 0, it is 0, 0, why? The decimals are 2. So 0, 0 to where you need to get the upper limits of this range. This take it as 25 as a whole number because these are ra random range numbers. So they are range numbers or the ranges that can have it as random range numbers. So we say just the range numbers. They're not probabilities. So shall run from 0, 0 to where 25. You pick this as a whole number 25 less 1, which will be 24. So the first range will be from 0, 0 to 24. Then to know where the next range will start from, you add 1 to this 24, meaning it will start from 25 to where? This is 70 now. You pick it as a whole number. Less 1, it should be 69. Add 1 to this 69. Then it will start. the next range starts from 70. To where this is like 100 that's why i said it is 1.00 not 1.0 because it, it was 1.0 it is like 10. now it is 1.00 we take it as 1 100 less 1 it will go up to 99. so i've done that one for only the first variable we do the same for the next variable which is the variable costs variable cost these are shillings the event is either 20, 40, 60, 20, 40, 60. Attach probabilities to the events. Uh, they are given there 0. 0.25. We have 0. 0.40. And then we have 0. 0.60. This is 0. It is 0. 0.20, not 0.25. 0. 0.20. I mean 0.25. I think it is point we're given there. Let me check well. For variable cost 0 0.25, then we have 0.55. Then we have 0 0.20, yeah, 0 0.20. So those are the probabilities. Come up with the cumulative probabilities. So this will be 0 0.25. 0 0.25 add 0 0.55. It's coming to 0 0.80. 0. Add 0 0.20 to 0 0.80. It should be 1.00. Get the range numbers. Range numbers. To the first one, we start from 0, 0 to where? 25 less 1 is 24. 24 add 1 shall be 25. To where? 80 less 1 it will be up to 79. Add 1 to 79, you know the next range will be from 80. This is, you take it as 100, it will go less 1, it will go up to 99. Do the same for the sales volume. Sales volume, these are units. Sales volume, we have 40,000, 60,000, and 100,000. 40,000, 60,000, 100. Thousand attached probabilities. These probabilities we have 0 0.3, 0 0.35, and 0 0.35. So 0 0.30, 0 0.35, and again 0 0.35. Then come up with the cumulative probabilities. This will be 0 0.30, add 0 0.35, this will be 0 0.65. Then add 0 0.35, this will be 1.00. Come up with the ranges again. You need to determine those range numbers. 
the first one will range from the 0, 0 to where because this was our 2. That implies what it will be up to 29. Add 1 to 29. This will be 30. Then 65 less 1. It will go up to uh, 64. Add 1 to 64. It will start from the next one from 65. And less 1 to 99. So we have our table or our random range numbers. From there, you prepare what you call the simulation worksheet. Simulation worksheet. Or the simulation work schedule. So you need to read the required parts of the questions so that you can understand what the examiner needs. It's the profit of the company. So remember what we say, how to get profits is equals to the contribution margin times the units minus the fixed costs. Contribution margin is selling price minus the variable costs. Multiply by the quantity or the volume, then you realize the fixed costs. Now, whenever you are given a simulation question, you, when you read, you need to know how many trials. Because I've said it is a trial and error method. So the examiner is saying we do it for how many trials? 10. So 1 to 10. So it's for 10 trials. Then from there, you need to have the first variable, which was the unit price or the selling price. Unit selling price. So we need to determine the selling prices. Then to determine this, we need the random, need the random numbers. I'll have R and there for random numbers. Then the next variable, the way they are following each other here, it's a variable costs. So variable costs, these are shillings. Then these are shillings. They are. And to get the variable cost again, we need the random numbers. So random numbers. I'll have it as Rn for random number. We also have another one, which is the sales volume, another. The, of the, all of them, we have the ones we have determined up to the range numbers we need to have their columns. So the sales volume, these are units. And to determine those, the sales volume, you again need random numbers. Then you need another column. If there is fixed cost, because you need this bit of fixed cost, you'll have it there, the fixed cost. Column for the fixed costs. Then the last column can be for profits. Profit is our last column there. Now let's let's have these random numbers. We see how they should be arranged. So it is after every variable you have another column for random number. Uh, it's very, very simple. Fixed cost we are aware or we know it remains constant or through. So if you are doing an exam and you want to get as much or many marks as possible, you start copying the fixed costs because that one remains constant. And when you read this question, we can just, I can read that part where we can get our fixed cost. It says, the management of this new era computer system limited is planning to launch a new a new product, some new product brand of Zimsung. The fixed cost of Zimsung is eight thousand. So for each trial, it's a trial and error. First trial, the fixed cost used will be eight thousand. The second trial, eight thousand. Then the third trial, eight thousand. So all through is eight thousand. Eight thousand, eight thousand, eight thousand, eight thousand. Should be ten, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. The last one here, eight thousand. So we have those. Uh, should be eight here. 
So let's now go to the next step and check the random numbers. If the probabilities are in pairs or two decimals, also the range, the random numbers should also be in pairs. That's why you can see we are given 81. And I want us to, to see what normally happens here. So whenever you are given these random numbers, you need to pick the first random number. It will help us to get the selling price. You put it there. So this is the column for the random number. This will help us to get the selling price for the first trial. The next one is 32. It will help us to get the variable cost. The third one is what? 60. It will help us to get the sales volume. So you pick them, that one, we have completed our first trial because we shall have these bar values. Then we go to the next trial. You cannot go to the next trial before finishing the first trial. Many people, they do not understand how to pick or they do not know how to pick the random numbers. They start saying pick the first 10 for the selling price. You'll be very wrong. You cannot go to the second trial without finishing the first trial, meaning... The first three random numbers, they are used for the first trial because we have three variables. So we go to number the others after now. I want to arrange first the random numbers after 60. We have 0, 4, 46, 31. 46, 31. We have 67, 25, 24. We have, the other one is 10. 10, 40, 02, then 39, 68, 08, 08, 59, 66, 89, 25, 11, 25, 11, 98, 16, 98, 16. So that is how they are. We have them. Let me align my fixed cost here very well. Eighty dollars and there. So that is it. So after you have that, after you have all these information there, these random numbers here, they will help you to get the selling price. These ones here, they will help you to get the variable cost per unit. Now, check here, 81. In Under the unit selling price here, 81, it ranges between where and where. It is under which range? 81 is between 70 and 99. So 781 is found in between that the, this is one we have. So you go and see the price. This is this column for the price? So 70 to 99, the price will be what? 100. So you will have the 100 here. Zero 04, we finish up with the selling price, then we go to the other one. Zero 04? 60. 60. The price will be 60. 67, which is ranging between here. So the price is? 80. 80. 10, the price is? 60. Great. 39. 80. 59, 80, 12, 60, 31, 80, 82, 100, 11, 60, 60. Now, we go to the other one, variable cost now. We shall be using these ranges here. 32 under the variable cost. The variable cost is here. 80. 32 is ranging between 25 and 79. So the price you go to the last column here, the first column here, 40. So that is what you shall have as your 32. This variable cost is 40. 46 is again 40. Yeah? 25 is ranging in between 25 and 79. Again, is 40. 40 is again 40 there. 68 is is again 40. 66, 66 is again 40. 64 is again 40. 86 is where it changes now to 60. 89 is again 60. Yeah? 
89 is 60.